YouTube, I'll cut another Doctor Who product review. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but today we're taking a look at a brand new line of figures from Warlord Games, and it is the Into the Time Vortex Doctor Who miniature pewter figures. These are, as I say, brand new. I will leave the link in the description below to go and buy them from Warlord Games, and they do have quite a few sets available. As you can see in front of me, we have the 12th Doctor and Companion set and the 10th Doctor and Companion set. And of course, surprise, surprise, both of these do, of course, include one Doctor figure and four of the Companions spread throughout their rear. So I have those sets available, and as well, we also have some monster sets available as well that we'll be seeing a review at some point in the near future as you can see so we have the Jadoon and the Silence ones as well as the Zygon ones as well so there's a few figure different designs in there as well and that review will be surfacing at some point whenever I film it. So first taking a look at the 12th Doctor and Companion set now because I've not been reviewing things recently because quite frankly there's not been anything good out this is I do believe the brand new packaging because Titan have also adopted this format as you can see we have the orange and yellow design here which has been retained from the previous one but this time it's been much more toned down and doesn't look like the god awful 3.75 packaging which I absolutely despised but as you can see it now looks a lot smarter and it works a lot better at least if this isn't the brand new design Warlord Games have done a very good job at it but we have the blue design here well of course you have the 12th Doctor printed along with Clara, Strax, Vastra and Jenny along with this really nice Gallifreyan motif around the side there then at the very top you have the BBC Doctor Who logo at the title of the set once again and then at the very bottom of this we get into the Time Vortex which is the title given to this line of figures and then of course Warlord Games the miniatures game and the BBC logo at the bottom. Side to the box of course retain the exact same information along with the image and the logo and the title of the set once again and the same printed on the opposite side however this time it is on the power roll format and then at the very bottom you of course get some delightful company information everybody's favourite and then at the very top of course we get once again the title of the set on the back of the box. Now once again an extremely good layout I really hope this is the new packaging for Doctor Who figures from now onwards. As you can see at the top we get the painted versions of the figures which note do not come with this set as you can see in the top corner there we get a much more detailed version of the actual unpainted versions but as you get them to look something like this I credit you a lot because that will be an extremely talented thing to do even though I got an A star in art I wouldn't be able to do that but yeah as you can see at the top we have a few more company information here along with the actual game itself and explaining how this will be sort of a board game in the future along with a bit of information about the doctor himself along with Made in Britain and the logo once again at the bottom taking a look at the product on the inside side now as this is a slightly bigger set compared to the singular monster ones it does in fact have a slightly different design as you can see on the front we get a bit of information about the 12th doctor along with an image of him this is basically just a sleeve a bit of a character write-up on each of the companions in this set along with what i really do like a bit of a quote from each of them and then sliding that out once again what i get this standard blue tray which is something that you get with every single figure in this set including the smaller ones it's just sort of a small design but what i really do like is the really small attention to detail of including the seal of Rassilon actually engraved into the plastic. I really do like that. Didn't need to be done, but I like the way that it was done anyway. The figures nicely displayed in their little cases, along with the little tiny stands in there as well. This is took from the episode Hellbent, especially the promotional material in fact, for Hellbent. So as you can see at the front there, he has his head, which has been very nicely done. We have a little bit of hair detailing on, including a little bit of stippling design and things, which is very nice. And then at the front we of course get the Sonic Shades, which once again, I do in fact believe that this is the first ever time on my channel that the Sonic Shades have in fact been reviewed so yeah that is a nice thing it's glad to actually see that they're going for the series 9 design as opposed to the series 8 one and then along with the costume itself we get some nice detailing on there i'm guessing that once this will be painted it would sort of stand out a little bit more but as you can see we have the coat there nicely flopping back which is great to see and what i do really like is we have the strap of the guitar there nicely across his shoulder as well along with a bit of detailing of the collar and things like that and the waistcoat beneath i think that overall generally considering that this is unpainted it stands out pretty well because we even have the addition there very vaguely of buttons and things like that along with the creasing which I'm very impressed by because I didn't really know what to expect when these arrived in the post I didn't really know what detailing would stand out but generally the creasing and the way they actually looks like material has been made very well but the legs down there we have once again not really too much to talk about because he wears quite plain trousers to be honest but as you can see once again the same detailing has been retained of the creasing bottom his sort of Doc Martin boot style things have been done also very well we have a bit of less detailing on there as well which is nice to see overall posture of the figure is very nice also as you can see it's in sort of a walking stance once again from the hellbent promotional material which also taking a look at the back i'm really impressed at the way the guitar has been sculpted as well considering it's quite a major part of the figure we have all the different parts in there of the guitar i don't know guitars very well but basically all of the string things and everything that's meant to be there to make it look like a guitar strap dangles down and connects to the bass as well once again that is a very thin piece of material so i'm guessing that these are for an older collector wouldn't really recommend giving these to children because i think that these are the definition 
version of a choking hazard to be honest because they are very very small but overall to finish off the figure we of course have the base which is the same thing for every single figure in this line as you can see that's been detailed rather nicely it's a nice shape nothing too big nothing too snazzy but what i do really like is the way that we have the 12th doctor engraved in lettering along the bottom there so that is a very nice addition on to the second figure now we of course have the impossible girl herself clara oswald as you can see she's sporting her face the raven outfit from series 9 which is once again a very nice choice of costume so as you can see there's nothing generally too much to talk about on the detailing front because i think that the face the raven costume is quite a generic one as it is even though it's one of my favorite ones i think that it just generally works very well so i like the way that the detailing on the jumper has been done as well as sort of the small thrills at the very bottom of the jumper as well as sort of on the wrists and the very top also a lot of creasing on there which is nice to see and also the shoes have been nicely done as well once again we have sort of the i want to call them vans slash converse style shoes but those have been done very well she's in a walking position once again i do believe don't quote me on it though this may have been taken from some series 9 promotional material in fact the scene from first the raven when she's just about to be hit by the raven when she sort of stood rather dramatically but moving up to the head itself as you can see we have the hair that's been sculpted very nicely i like the way that it flows down onto the body itself and the face generally because it is a female i do generally think that most merchandise do tend to tone down the facial expression and things as you can see though we do have the faint detailing of the eyes and the nose and things in there as well when taking a look at the back as you can see we have a little bit more detailing on the hair that is a little bit more visible this time as well as a little bit of detailing on the back of the trousers as well i do believe that we have the detail of the sculpting of the pockets there as well which is nice one thing that i have noticed though from filming it does tend to be that the figure is slightly tilted towards the side i don't know if that's meant to be something that is a part of the actual figure itself or, or just something of an error in the sculpting process but yeah it doesn't really put me off too much but at the very bottom of the figure much like with the 12th doctor we of course have clara oswald sculpted nicely into the bottom Moving on to the next figure now, we have Madame Vastra. Now, she's one of the figures that doesn't really tend to appear much in merchandise for some reason. I don't really know why. But once again, this figure has been posed very dramatically. I really like the way, in fact, out of them all, probably in this set, this is possibly one of my favourites for the way that it's been posed. As you can see, she's in sort of a dramatic battle style of position. So she's reaching back to get her sword, which has been very nicely done. And first off, the detailing on the face is incredibly good as well. Once again, I think that this is possibly one of the best figures in the actual set from the detailing of the scales on the face face as well as the mouth and i really like the way the sort of side panels of the silurian i don't really know what you would call them but basically the parts that jut out of the head them look very nice as well i think those have been very nicely detailed and i like the way that they come to a point at the very top moving on to the costume i can't really recall what episode this is from i'm thinking the ending of deep breath when she's having the fight scene at the very end or maybe demons run in a good man goes to war i can't really remember but it's sort of the tighter costume that has been done very well once again we have the same detailing applied to this that you would expect the creasing of the clothing and things and generally overall in the actual show this is in fact sort of quite a black style of costume anyway so i think the detailing has been picked up rather nicely on this so we have the different creases along the arms as well the way that, that sort of bags around the sides and then including as well on the legs as well we get the detailing of not really too much because they are sort of quite a skin tight style of design however at the very bottom which i think have been really incredibly done we have the high heels which not really the high heel themselves i'm more specifically on about the actual heel i think that's been incredibly well done i don't know how they've managed to do that of even having the heel actually supporting the figure itself and having that hole between i think that's been done incredibly well and i really like where the right one is in fact lifted up as well so we just have the actual base of the shoe on the floor and the heel itself lifted up from the actual base i think and then moving on to the back of the figure we get a little bit more of the detailing of the sword or katana or whatever it is from the actual show as you can see that has been detailed rather nicely and once again will stand out a little bit more once painted and then we also get sort of a sash style of thing that comes down from the victorian dress style of piece i do really like the way that that's been done and a lot of detail for the size i'm very impressed with that of course at the very bottom of this to round it all off we have the base of madame bastret nicely printed on it the next figure now we have jenny now she is one of the main characters i don't believe has hardly ever been made into merchandise i think even madame bastret has been made into a figure more than jenny has she always tends to be left out i think jenny yeah as you can see once again she's in sort of a similar costume to vastra and once again a little bit of a similar pose so these two go really well together because again we have a quite a skin tight version of a victorian dress in there with the same detailing of the trousers and things as well as the 
boots as well those have been nicely done however this time the heel is a part of the shoe moving up to the main part of the body itself once again the same creasing has been applied and then we have these skin tight arms and things and the actual sword itself i'm rather impressed with once again because this is quite a thin piece and it has in fact been sculpted singly by itself so it does in fact stick out on its own accord so i do really like that and then the face itself once again i think that you can't really tell too much it looks like jenny but once painted once again you could probably make it look like jenny and the hair has been done so it's nicely tied up in the bun at the back which can of course be seen when we turn towards the back there the bun is a little bit more prominent and once again a similar way i really like where the material in fact drops behind the leg there all of the material has in fact flowed on these figures because even though these are metal figures i think that the way that the material has been made to look in fact looks rather natural and then of course at the very bottom of the figure to finish it off nicely we have the base along with jenny flint nicely printed Moving on to the final member of the Paternoster gang, it is of course Strax. As you can see, he's been done in his nice little suit that's made a number of appearances, most importantly in deep breath, because I do believe he is in fact holding a newspaper, which I do really like from that quite funny scene, which did in fact make me laugh when he hit Clara with a newspaper. But yeah, I thought that was a really nice scene, and along with the costume itself, I really like the way it's been done. I'm guessing that his fist is up from the scene where he's saying about, um, we will crush them or something like that. I've not watched deep breath in a rough time, but yeah, I really like the way that that's been done once again quite an iconic and funny pose as you can see moving up to the head first it's been rather nicely done actually i think the sontaran style of designers came out really well having sort of the lower eyebrow and things and then the ears have been nicely done as well and i do believe we can even see some slight creasing and sort of a jawline in there as well which is really nice to see i could imagine this sculpt being revised slightly once we do in fact get a sontaran in this line which i'm guessing will probably be at some point in the near future i can imagine it being quite high up on the list of figures to make other than that though as you can see we have the suit which is once again been rather nicely done we have the design nicely stretched over the actual Santaran armor below tailing of the lapels which would be very nicely done along the button as well as some standard creasing in there as well especially on the trousers and then going down to the shoes which once again have been done rather well for Santaran we've got quite a lot of different bits of detailing on there as well including the laces and things yeah and then on the very back of the figure once again not really too much to talk about apart from a little bit of creasing however on the very front once again we get the base which has been rather nicely detailed along with Strax nicely printed but overall for the 12th Doctor and Companion set, I think it's a really nice choice of figures. I like the inclusion of the Padanoster gang, I think especially having them all together is very nice. And I like the addition of Clara as well being in a Face the Raven Series 9 outfit. And most importantly, I certainly like the way that they've included the Sonic Shades and the guitar part of the 12th Doctor. Once again, although not seen too much in the actual show itself, and mainly it was just for promotional material, I think that it's just nice to see something slightly different in these figures. And a nice set of figures, and I rather like them. I think they represent the 12th Doctor era pretty well. And also, just to finish off the 12th Doctor set, we get this little bag of counter things, which not really too much to talk about, to be honest. They're sort of just a little design with Warlord Games printed on the bottom there. And then, of course, on the top, we get nothing really at all. We get a few little prongs around the side as well, which I believe are from the actual mould. And I'm guessing that these will have a more important part to play once the game is actually in full swing. But yeah, I do believe for now, what the main purpose of these are is, in fact, just to sort of base the figure on. So as you can see, it gives them a little bit more support. So yeah, that is a nice inclusion. We're taking a look at the second set now we have the 10th doctor and companion set now as you can see straight away a slightly different alteration in the packaging i don't know if that's just because that this is from a era before so it's a technically part of the heritage line or whatever they like to call them in sort of the different companies i don't really know about everything past current doctor who tends to be a part of a different line at the moment but yeah we have the return of the diamond design which is my personal favorite style packaging so i'm very happy to see it make a return once again at the front generally not really too much to talk about at the top we get the choice of the classic doctor who logo so yeah not quite sure on that and at the very top we get the bbc and warlord games and then of course at the very front we get the lovely diamond design printed along with the 10th doctor rose wilf donna and martha and then of course at the very bottom of this we get into the time vortex along with a very familiar face having the layout of the gray design back again with the 10th doctor's dates and the 10th doctor and companion set at the bottom and inside of the box you get once again exactly the same detailing and layout generally of the 12th doctor set have sides of the box once again the same parallel design has been used along with the company information nicely printed at the bottom there all tucked away and then at the top of this we get the same information in the titling of the set for the back of the box however things are pretty much remained the same as you can see at the top we get a nice painted version of all of the figures in all of their glory once again we have martha rose the 10th doctor donna and what i really love the addition of is wilf at the top there giving his little salute at the very bottom of the box we of course get a bit of information about the 10th doctor along with what these are actually about having the board game information there along with a few more company bits at the bottom 
This is a bigger set. We do have sort of this slip case around the box itself, along with a bit of information about the 10th Doctor, along with a lovely quote at the bottom. Same detailing as last time, we get a bit of information about all the character write-ups of each of the characters in this set, along with a lovely quote. Sliding this out once again, we get the same tray once again printed with the Gallifreyan text at the front. And on the inside, we get the exact same layout of all the figures nicely installed in there. So here we have the figures out the box. As you can see, they all look pretty good. Once again, we have quite a lot of variation in here. Nothing really too new apart from Wilf, but that's not on the company's fault, just generally because the 10th Doctor era has already been pretty well covered in figures and things in the past, but still, we have some really nice choices in this set. First, taking a look at the 10th Doctor, once again, as you can see, he's been sculpted in quite a promotional style of material, pose of his legs sort of quite widespread with his hands in his pockets and things, of his trench coat, which has been rather nicely done, but taking a look at the suit itself, it's been rather nicely detailed, I like the way that the pinstripe has been applied to the actual figure, having a few of them actually engraved into the front, which is very nice to see, along with the tie and the collar of the actual suit underneath as well, I think that for the scale that has been very nicely replicated, along with the trousers, once again, we get a bit of a creased and wrinkled material, effect which has been very nicely applied along with at the very bottom the converse which has been very well done also even on the actual face on the painted version on the box it does look a tad off and doesn't really look too much like David Tennant probably overall it's probably the least likely of the whole of the sets I'm taking a look at in this review but yeah I still think that it looks okay for the scale I think that considering that this isn't even as big as my fingernail I think that it's still been done pretty well for the size and on the back of the figure generally not really too much to talk about apart from the back of the trench cut is just sort of the same creased and wrinkled material along the side of the arms and things the way that it's been tucked back which is very nice once again replicating the material very well of course, you guessed it, on the bottom of the figure, we get the base, along with the 10th Doctor printed nicely, engraved into the actual base. Taking a look at the next figure now, Screw Rose, we're taking a look at Wilf, because hey, he's my favourite. But yeah, as you can see, he's been done very nicely. I love the way that he's been done, having the little salute in there with his little woolly hat and things. I actually think that this is the first ever time we've got Wilfred Mott in any type of figure, in any type of scale, so I'm so happy that the company have finally decided to do it. But yeah, I think this has been very well done. He's in sort of his allotment style of wear, with his woolly little hat hat in there and his woolly jumper along the collar of his jacket in there as well and I really like where the jacket has been done so it's sort of partially buttoned which is nice along with a bit of creasing in there as well I generally really like the pose I think that it's been very nicely done and it captures Wilf very nicely having the salute in there from the end of time and then of course at the very bottom of this we get the creased and wrinkled material effect on the trousers along with the boot style of design which once again once painted you can sort of make look muddy like he's been up his allotment at the very back of the figure once again we get a little bit of material design from the actual jacket so we get sort of the hood style of piece there which has been very nicely done along with the creasing effect of where the arm goes up to salute as well I think it looks very accurate to how it arm actually would look in a coat when it's been creased but yeah I think that generally overall I just love this figure for what it is because I think that this is possibly the highlight of the set because I just love Wilf and I love this figure because I think for the scale it's been very nicely done and I think that overall from all the figures in the sets luckily it's probably one of the best ones for the likeness actually on now to Wilf's granddaughter, we of course have Donna Noble. Now once again, I do believe that this has been taken from some Series 4 promotional material. She's got her brown coat on once again with sort of the little waist style belt thing along with the grey dress, once painted at least that is. But I think that's been done rather well. I like the pose. I don't really think that Donna had quite a lot of iconic poses, but I think that this one certainly stands out quite a lot. I love the way that we have the jacket once again flapping down over the legs and things, and I think that very naturally falls on the figure. Along with the creasing and things, I love the way that we also have the detail of even the ring on there as well, which are low, not really hard to see on the unpainted version of the figure. I think it would stand out a lot more once painted. And then on the actual face itself, once again, a little bit of an issue that we had with Clara. I think that all of the females do tend to have quite a sort of soft style of design on the face. And I think that generally overall, the likeness is there. You can tell who it's meant to be. So I guess I'm still happy with that. And on the very back of the figure, once again, we get the same detailing of the different strands of hair, which has been really well done for the size of the creasing of the jacket in there as well. So much like all of the other figures, we get the base, which has been very really nicely sculpted, along with Donna Noble printed at the bottom. We have Martha, once again, I do believe taken from a Series 3 promotional material, because she's in one of the poses from the posters. As you can see, she's in sort of her generic costume that pretty much every single figure or piece of merchandise that's been released of her is in. I do believe that it's from the early parts of Series 3, maybe the Daleks in Manhattan 
pattern i can't really recall though but that's been done very nicely i like the way we have the leather jacket there printed with all different creasing on and things along with the skin tri trousers i think that generally her costume was quite boring in the show to be honest but i still think that it's been rather well replicated within this figure i really like where also the hair has been done as you can see take a look at the back there or at least the side i really like where it actually juts out and we have sort of the is it sort of a bun at the back there that's like got all the madness and sort of the strands coming out of it i really like where that has been done i think that it once again replicates her hair as seen in the show pretty well along with hose isn't really too interesting because to be honest martha didn't really have any dramatic poses in the show once again a little bit of a similar thing to the clara figure although slightly not as drastic as that one i do think that it is on a slight angle once again doesn't really take away much from the figure and then of course at the very bottom as she is also sort of tilted because this is the front of the figure but she's in fact looking that way so i think that is a little bit of an odd choice but once again at the very bottom we get the detailing printed of martha jones on the base as well then finally for this set, Love Raw Hater, we've got Rose Tyler. Once again, she's in a little bit of a normal position because she didn't really have too much of a dramatic pose, really. Bit of a recurring theme for the 10th Doctor Companions, in fact, really. But yeah, I can't recall what episode that this is from. I want to see the early parts of Series 2, but I don't really know. But yeah, I think that's been done rather nicely. I like the way that we have the design, especially once painted, of having the creasing in there. Sort of the nice opportunity to have some shading in there as well, which has been very well done. The trousers have also been done nicely. As you can see, we have sort of the skin tight design once again making a return along with a bit of creasing on there as well and much like Martha we have a little bit of sort of a flare coming out the bottom along with the trainers in there I really like the way the hand sort of comes around the thigh I thought that, that was done very nicely and I, th I like the way that that's not just been applied to the actual pocket I think that makes it look a little bit more interesting and then as well for the head once again a little bit of a similar thing to the Donna figure I think that we have I like the way the hair has been done at least I think that that falls on the figure very nicely although very oddly I think that this looks more like Rose Tyler when it's unpainted rather than the one when it is painted because I think that although it looks absolutely brilliant for the size to be honest when painted I think that it looks a little bit like a cartoon version of the person but yeah I think that generally when not painted especially in this light right now I could sort of see the outlying of the nose and things I think that it has been rather well done for the size and I think that generally it's rather impressive so I rather like them I think especially once you put them all together I think you can really get an impression of what the game is going to look like in the future and overall it looks rather impressive I think I could imagine a really nice game board with all of these on so yeah i don't really know what the game is going to entail to be honest i've only looked on the website and actually seen that there is going to be a game for it or, or something like that so yeah I'm, I'm interested to see the way that they're going to go with it as well once you've added the jadoons to this the zygons the silence which i'll be taking a look at in a future video i think that generally it'll be a really nice little collection of figures of course it won't be to everybody's cup of tea and i know that quite a lot of people will probably be painting them those talented people that can actually paint this small but yeah i think that if painted once again they'll look just as good but i think the fact that they're unpainted in this form so there's quite a nice monochrome style sort of going around them so i really do like that and i think that generally overall what i would like to sum these up as is sort of nice little collectible micro figures in a way for an older audience as these are generally a older audience thing as they are made of metal i wouldn't recommend giving these to children generally, overall i rather like them i think they're a nice addition to my collection and i'm really looking forward to see where they go with them next Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like. Or please subscribe if you're not already. If you have any questions, please do leave them below. And be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time. So thanks for watching and bye for now.